Hello, EL team. It's Natalie. I'm very sorry I meant to share this with you all at the end of the year meeting in May, but I completely spaced it. I want to make sure that I show you a tutorial video on how you go in and set up test sessions for the WIDA screener for next year. And this process is exactly the same for Access, but ultimately I want to show you how to set up the WIDA screener test sessions because I don't know who is going to be the person to take care of this. So I want to make sure that you all have the resource, so you know how to do it in case it comes down and it now is your responsibility for setting this up. So you may remember you used to tell me who your new kids were. I went in, I put in the kid, I created the test session, and then basically I just sent you an email with a test ticket. It was like, here you go, you're ready to go test the kid. And that's all that was needed to be done. In this case though, there's gonna be a couple more steps that you'll need to follow since, like I said, I don't know who will be in charge of this and I don't want you guys not having what you need for the start of the school year. So. Prior to even coming in and setting up a test session, the process is going to be that you contact Casey King to notify him of who your new student are or is, if it's one student or if it's multiple students, he is the person and the only person that has access in the system to adding new students. So he's going to make sure that all of that is taken care of behind the scenes and it's done correctly so that there's no glitches in the system, so that there's no problems for you. So he's still going to help you with that piece. You just need to notify him of the who, and that way he can go in there and create that for you, okay? So first and foremost, make sure you contact him. He will then notify you when the student's in there, and then you'll be ready for this part. So you will come to the drcedirect.com um, website. If it's hard to remember that, you can always go to DRC portal for WIDA and Google search that and it should still pop up for you. But this website, of course, is the one that you will come to to manage all of your testing for both the WIDA screener as well as for access. So it's in the system. So you'll go ahead and log into the system. The system can be a little wonky sometimes. Right now it seems to be working pretty smoothly, but that's of course because it's summer. So I'm not having any troubles clicking on things today, but sometimes you have to click on the applications or the tabs more than once to get them in. Don't think that there's something wrong. It's just the system might be bombarded. So to begin, you're gonna click on all applications. Now keep in mind that I have a lot more options than you probably do because I'm had access to managing an entire district. So don't worry if you can't see all of these, that's not a big deal. The three in particular that you need to have for this piece of it, you need to have this test management tab, you should have this report delivery tab, and you should have this screener scoring tab. If you go into your system and you don't have these three, please let Casey know so that he can make sure to give you the right permissions for those. But those will be the three things that you will need to have in order to make the system run efficiently for yourself. So for this video in particular, you're gonna be clicking on the test management tab, and then you're gonna click on manage test sessions right here. So as you'll remember, anytime we are WIDA screening any student, that means that we have the home language survey, we've followed up and we definitely know that we need to screen this student for further assessment to determine if they qualify for EL services. Um, and we also look at their body of evidence, but this is one big piece of that. And remember that at the beginning of the year, we get 30 school days to test them. And any student that comes in after that first 30 days, we only get 10 days to test them. So this process needs to be pretty smooth. And so you have this video to play over and over and over again if you need to. So feel free to watch this to help yourself out. Remember, let Casey know. That way there's no duplicates or any of that sort of thing. If the student is just moving within the district, we don't have to retest them. We just keep going. If it's somebody who has been gone from the district for over a semester, we have to test. So let's say they started with us in January, or excuse me, in August, and they left the second week of school, and then they didn't return until January, we still have to test them because they've been gone for an entire semester. So even though they started with us, we still have to test them again, okay? But if it's a student that's just been moving in or it's only been a short period of time, you don't need to. Okay, in here, 
it should only populate to the schools that you have again i have district access so down here where the administration is this is where you're going to see your drop down some of you may have all of these some of you might have more some of you may have less it's okay in this case for this video you're going to be clicking on the screener colorado 1920. the district should pre-populate and in this case i'm going to use the guinea pig of avondale because it's just the one that popped up but you will need to select on your specific school. If you only have one school, it should just populate naturally. If you have multiple schools, you'll select the school that the student that you're testing or students that you're testing will be at. Down here below, if you have sessions that you've already set up or that have done in the past, they will pop up in here. If they don't show, you can click on show, but in this case, nobody's been tested yet, so nothing's showing, which is to be expected. So you'll scroll down here to the bottom and click on the blue add session button. A new screen will pop up. If the screen does not pop up, you probably have a pop-up blocker issue. Make sure that you're in Google Chrome when you're using the DRC because it's the most user-friendly of all of them. And if your pop-ups are not working, there might be a little X up in this area of your screen. You just need to allow pop-ups to happen in the system or you're going to have problems. So make sure that that's um, enabled. For your testing session, I've always named the testing session after the school, so in this case it'd be Avondale. Then I've always listed it as the cluster, which let's just say I'm gonna test a third grader, so that would be a two, three. And then I'm gonna give it a date. So I'm gonna say it's today's date, so that way I can remember, oh yeah, I set up that test session, I tested that kid in July, and moving forward. Okay, then the domain is gonna be the screener that should naturally populate itself. As you notice, these are red asterisks and these have to be completed. The assessment in um, listed here is going to be that grade cluster. So you're gonna need to select on the grade cluster that's appropriate. In the email that this video is attached to, I have added that matrix so it's really easy um, to go to to see, okay, where, when do I test this kid, at what point during the year, and what test do I give them? So as you may know, um, our kindies and our first graders first semester take the paper version of the WAPT, so they're not in here. So please pay attention to that grid because some grade levels take exactly the grade cluster they should, and some might take the grade cluster below, dependent upon the point in the year. But in this case, since it's a third grader, the third grader is going to take the screener two, three, because if it's the beginning um, semester or the second semester, that's still what's appropriate for that student. Okay. As you'll notice, it already pre-populated the mode, beginning date, and end date, which is great. If I had any students that Casey had added, I would have them showing in this box right here. I would click on their name, I'd click the add arrow, and they should populate their name over on this side, and then I'd click save, and that would be all that I needed to do, and I've voila, I've created the test session for them. If the student isn't populating in here, you may have to search them, if the search doesn't give you the student, you need to contact Casey because something might be wrong in the system. If you're setting up more than one test session, um, you don't set up more than one session for one individual student, but if you have multiple students at different grade levels and such, you have to create new test sessions for each of those grade clusters. So you may need to click save and add another um, versus just save. But depending on what your needs are, that's what you do. And that literally is it. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and click cancel because I can't really show you and follow through on actually saving a session. So I'm just going to go ahead and cl click cancel on this this part. But I'm going to go up here and I'm going to show you what last year's would have looked like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and click on show sessions because it'll populate what sessions we tested last year, what kiddos and what grade level. So as you can see here, we had tested kiddos at different points last year for Avondale. And as you can see under assessments, it shows you the screener in which we gave them. Over here on this right side is really important. These are the buttons that you're going to pay attention to once you create your session. So let's just say that I just created this one, even though I didn't, but let's say I just created that one. And then I want to know how I go about printing their test tickets. I'm going to come over here to the lovely printer icon and I'm going to click on it. And I know we've got to stay confidential, so I'm going to show you this, but please know that this needs to stay confidential with the information on this video. So the first thing that you're going to see on the test ticket is it's going to walk you through just the general information about prior to the test and at the time of the test and when students are finished. It gives you a little how-to. The next thing it's going to give you a roster. In this case, we only tested one student. If there were multiple students that I was screening, there would be a list of them here. 
But down below is where I'm going to cut out their actual test ticket and I'm either going to give this to the student or I'm going to keep it handy on my clipboard so I can type in the student's uh, username and password to get them onto the DRC Insight system to test them. So these, this is what you'll need to have in uh, paper copy prior to testing them. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, but that is the icon that icon, excuse me, that you will select. Over here on the side, the one with the pencil, several of you ask sometimes, where's that darn tier placement for the writing? That little pencil is the one that it will tell you what tier they're in for their writing piece. Okay, that in a nutshell is exactly what you need to know for setting up a test session. It's pretty simple, but if you don't do it all the time, and sometimes you kind of forget how to go about doing it. So if you have any issues, if you have any complications with the system, Casey is our district assessment coordinator. So please make sure to contact him if you have any questions or concerns and he will help walk you through it. And I think that's it. So I wish you guys the best of luck. Miss you already. Take care.